Hi, today we're going to be learning about representing functions using tables. In the last lesson, we learned about using flow diagrams to represent functions, and tables are going to work very, in a very similar way. They also are a way of showing how input values change to output values based on a certain rule or function. Okay, so here we've got an example of a table. And in this table, you can see we've got our x values over here. These are our input values. And at the bottom, I've got the y values. These are the output values. Now, generally, when you have a table, that is how it works, that the input values will be on the top and the output values will be on the bottom. I've been told over here that my rule is y equals 2x plus 1. So in other words, whatever the input is, I'm going to multiply it by 2, and then I'm going to add 1, and that will give me my y value. So let's just check it. So if I have negative 7 times 2 is negative 14, plus 1 is negative 13. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, plus 1 is negative 7. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. And 8 times 2 is 16, plus 1 is 17. So this rule applies to all of the input and output values in this whole table. Okay, so now we're going to go on to, on to an example where we have to find the input and output values for the input and output values that we've been given based on this rule for this table over here, which is y equals negative 3x plus 2. Okay, so we have to find the values for a, b, c, d, e, and f. Okay, so in this case, our rule is y equals negative 3x plus 2. So I'll start off with that. Okay, and then I need to first, for question A, I need to find out what the output value is if my input is negative 10. So I'm going to be finding the y value. So y equals negative 3 times 10, uh, times negative 10. Now, remember we learned yesterday or in the last lesson that when you are substituting in a value, you have to put it in brackets. Otherwise, this would end up looking like negative 3 minus 10, but it's not. It's supposed to be negative 3 multiplied by negative 10. So you have to put that in brackets plus 2, and now we're going to simplify. Now, when we're multiplying a negative by a negative, we get a positive. So that's going to be positive 30 plus 2 gives me 32. So my output value for question A is 32. Okay, next one. Question B, we've again been given an input value. This time it's negative 5. So I've got y equals negative 3 times negative 5 in brackets plus 2. And that I'm going to simplify. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. Plus 2 gives me 17. So that one over there is 17. Then the next one, I've been given an output value of 8. And I need to work out what the input value is for this one. Okay, so if y is 8, I've got 8 equal to negative 3x plus 2, I need to work out what the x value is. So this is telling me that negative 3 multiplied by something plus 2 has to give me 8. So first, what would this have been before I added the 2? So let's take the 2 away and let's say this would have been 6. Before I added 2, I would have had 6. So negative 3 times something has to give me positive 6. How do I get a negative multiplied by something giving me a positive? I have to multiply by another negative. So in other words, I know that x has to be something that is negative. Okay, because a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive. So it's going to be negative. Now, I need to get 6. So 3 times 2 will give me 6. So x must be negative 2. So now let's just check it. Anytime you work out an x value, you can check it. So negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Plus 2 gives me 8. And that's what I need over there. So I know that this is correct over here. Okay, so that's for question C over there. So now let's go and find out what we're going to get for D. So that was negative 2. Then D, we have been given the output value of negative 1. So I'm going to go and put that in here. So I've got negative 1 equals negative 3x plus 2. And now I'm going to simplify, or I'm going to work out what x has to be. So again, negative 3 times something plus 2 has to give me negative 1. So first, let's see what this would, what this would have been before I added the 2. Before I added 2, negative 1 had to have been negative 3. So I need to have negative 3... Um, after I multiply negative 3 by something. So what can I multiply negative 3 by to get negative 3? It's staying the same. And whenever you stay the same from multiplication, you have to be multiplying by 1. So in other words, x has to be 1. 
Now again, we can check it. So we can say negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 2, and that gives me negative 1, which is what I've got over there. So my input value over here has to be 1. And that gives me an output of negative 1. Then for question E, I've got an input value of 6. So I'm going to say y equals negative 3 times 6 in brackets plus 2. And now I'm going to simplify that. So negative 3 times 6 is negative 18 plus 2, and that gives me negative 16. So if my input value is 6, then my output value or my y value is going to be negative 16. And then the last one for question f, we've been given an output value of negative 25. So I've got negative 25 equals negative 3x plus 2. So again, I need to know what must x be if I multiply it by negative 3 and I add 2 and I get negative 25. So first, what would this have been before I added the 2? It would have been negative 27. So I need to be able to multiply negative 3 by something to get negative 27. Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27. So that means that x should be equal to 9. So now let's just check it. Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27, plus 2 is negative 25. So now I know that that is the correct x value. So that is what I get for this one over here, 9. Okay, so this is what your table should look like if you have filled in all of those values. So when your x value or your input is negative 10, your output is 32. If your input is negative 5, your output is 17. If your output is 8, it means that your input had to have been negative 2. If your output is negative 1, it means that your input had to have been 1. If your input is 6, your output is negative 16. And if your output is negative 25, that means your input had to have been 9. Okay, so now you're going to do an example for yourself where you are going to be working out the input and output values in this table based on the equation that you've been given over here, which is y equals negative 9x. I'm going to give you three minutes to work out all of the missing values in this table.
Okay, so let's go through that table and see what you got. So in the first one, we had an input of negative 8. We had to use our rule y equals negative 9x to find out what the output would be. Okay, so over here, I've got, I've already substituted it in. I've got negative 9 times negative 8, and that gives me positive 72. So in the table over here, you should have got positive 72 as your output. Okay, next one, I've got an input of negative 2, so I have negative 9 times negative 2, and that gives me positive 18. Okay, and again, remember, you have to put it in brackets. So that gives me positive 18 in, in the table over there. The next one, my output is 0. So I have to say negative 9 times what will give me 0. The only time I can get 0 from multiplication is if I multiply something by 0. So this is not 0, which means that that has to be 0. So my x, in this case, has to be 0. Okay, so over here, my input is 0. So my input and my output are both 0 in that one over there. Next one, I've got an output of negative 27. So negative 27 equals negative 9x. I need to know what can I multiply negative 9 by to get negative 27. Okay, so x is equal to 3. Because if I multiply negative 9 by 3, I will get negative 27. So my input over here is 3. For this one, my input that I've been given is 4. I have to work out what the output is. So negative 9 times 4 is negative 36. So my output for this one is negative 36. And then the last one, if my output is negative 90, I need to know what my input is. So negative 90 equals negative 9x. What can I multiply negative 9 by to get negative 90? I need to multiply it by 10. So x must be equal to 10 for this one. So my input was 10. Okay, so that is what your table should look like once you have filled in all of those values. First, if your x value is negative 8, your y value is 72. If x is negative 2, y is 18. If x is 0, y is also 0. If x is 3, y will give you negative 27. If x is 4, y is negative 36. And finally, if x is 10, y is negative, 10, negative 90. Okay. So that is what you should have had for all of those ones in that table. Now you're going to do another one where again you've been given a rule. In this case the rule is negative a plus 8b equals negative a plus 8. Now remember we learned in the last lesson that when you're working with functions the variables or the letters don't have to be x and y. That is the most common but it's not the only thing that it could be. You can have other letters as well. So in this case our input is a and our output is b. Okay, and our rule is b equals negative a plus 8. So you need to go and fill in all of these missing values in this table. And again, I'm going to give you three minutes to work on it.
Okay, so let's see what you got for that table. So first of all, our rule b equals negative a plus 8. Now this rule is actually a bit deceptive. It looks simpler than it is. You need to be careful about this negative over there, particularly when you are working out where you've been given an output and you're working out the input. Okay, so let's go and see what you should have got for each of them. So first of all, we're starting with our rule b equals negative a plus 8. In the first one, we've been given the input and it is negative 10. So I've got b equals negative and then in brackets, negative 10 plus 8. Okay, so first I need to get rid of those brackets. Bed mass says I do multiplication first. So I've got this negative multiplied into the brackets. Remember, we learned earlier in the year that if you just have a minus in front of the brackets, it's actually negative 1 multiplied into that bracket. So it's negative 1 times negative 10 is positive 10 plus 8. And that gives you 18. So your output for the first one should have been positive 18 if your input is negative 10. The next one, again, we've got a negative value. So negative and then negative 4 plus 8 gives me positive 4 plus 8, which is 12. Okay, so over here I get 12. For the next one, I have been given the output value of 9. And I need to work out what the input value is. Okay, so first of all, I need to know something plus 8 must give me 9. So before I added the 8, what would this have been? It would have been 1. So something must be, e or a negative something must be equal to 1. Now remember, just like we had over here, I had a negative and then that's being multiplied by whatever my input is. Okay, now it must be equal to a positive 1. So how do I get a negative a equal to positive 1? What must a be? It has, the negative has to cancel out with another negative. So a has to be negative 1 because two negatives are going to make this positive. So if I do that, I get negative, negative 1, which gives me positive 1 plus 8 is 9. Okay, if you want to actually see that, you can do it like this. You have negative, negative 1 plus 8. That gives me positive 1 plus 8, which is 9. Now remember I said it's always a good idea to check yourself if you've worked out an input, to check if you are correct. Okay, and you can check it like this. So negative, negative 1 plus 8 is 1 plus 8 gives me 9. Okay, so like I said, this negative, it makes it more complicated than it actually looks. You need to be a lot more careful when you've got that negative over there. Okay, next one, I've got 3 equals negative 8 plus 8. So the same concept is going to apply. First, what would this have been before I added the 8? It would have been negative 5. So this needs to equal negative 5. So what does A have to be to give me negative 5? A has to be 5. Negative 5 is equal to negative 5. Okay, so a has to just be 5. Now let's check it. Okay, so I've got negative and then 5 plus 8. That gives me negative 5 plus 8, which is negative 3. And that, which is positive 3. <laughs> positive 3. Okay, negative 5 plus 8 is 3. So, and that is the 3 that I've got over there. Okay. So be careful when you've got a negative over here. You need to be very, very careful when you're trying to find an input for a given output. Okay, the next one, I have been given the output or the input of 9 and I have to find the output. So that's just going to be negative 9 plus 8 gives me negative 1. So over here, I didn't fill this in. So if my, in, if my output was 9, my input was negative 1. If my output is... 3, my input is 5, and then for this one, if my input is 9, my output is negative 1. Okay, now we're going to go on to the last one, where we've been given an output value again. So negative 7 equals negative a plus 8. Okay, so again, what would this have been before I added the 8? It would have been negative 15. Okay, so negative 15 equals negative a. So what does a have to be if negative a is equal to negative 15? a has to be just 15. And let's just check it. So I've got negative 15 for a plus 8 gives me negative 15 plus 8, which is 
negative 7. So that's what we should get over there. Okay, so our input over here had to be 15. And that is what your table should look like once you've filled in all of those missing values. So an input of negative 10 gives you an output of 18. An input of negative 4 gives you an output of 12. Input of negative 1 gives you output of 9. Input of 5 gives you output of 3. Input of 9 gives you output of negative 1. And input of 15 gives you output of negative 7. Okay, now we're going to go on to an example where we haven't been given the rule. We have been given some input values and some output values. Some of them are corresponding to each other already. And we have to use the ones that we, we have a complete pair for. We have to use those to help us to work out what the rule is and then to be able to find the uh, missing values for A, B, and C over here as well. Okay, so first of all, I need to identify where do I have complete pairs of input and output values. I've been given over here an input value and an output value. So those ones I know already. Okay, so I can use that pair. Here, I've been given an input value, but I don't know the output value. So I can't use this to help me to work out the rule because I don't know the complete pair. This one I do know, so I can use that. And then here, I know the output, but I don't know the input, so I can't use that. This one, I know the input and the output, so I can use that as well. Okay, so now we're going to, and then this one, I don't know the output, so I can't use that. So if you are going to work out a rule, you have to know both the input and the output values to be able to use that set of to be able to use that, that pair to actually work out what your rule is. Okay, so I'm going to be using those three um, complete pairs that I've got over here to help me to work out the rule. And the way that I'm going to do it is the same as what I did when I was doing the flow diagrams, by seeing how do I get from the input to the output, and is there something that is common, a common method that works for all three of the complete pairs that I've got over there. Okay, so let's have a look at how we're going to do that. Okay, so over here, I have got an input of negative 6 and an output of negative 12. Then I've got an input of 1 and an output of negative 5. And I've got an input of 9 and an output of 3. And I need to know, is there a common method that I can use for each of these pairs? Okay, so to get from negative 6 to negative 12, I have two choices. Okay, I have actually more than two choices, but I have two simple choices, two basic just addition or multiplication choices. Okay, so I can either subtract 6, so I can minus 6, or I can multiply by 2. Okay, in this one over here, from 1 to negative 5, I can either subtract 6 or I can multiply by negative 5. And in this one over here, I can either subtract 6 or I can divide by 3. Okay, so I have a common method that is coming up in all of these examples, and that is to subtract 6. Okay, so that is what I'm going to be using for my rule. So now I need to look back at my table and I can see my, in, my input values are x and my output values are y. So my rule is going to be y equals something with x. Okay, so now what am I doing to x? What am I doing to the input to get the output every single time? I am subtracting 6. That is my common method. Okay, so I'm going to take my x and I'm going to subtract 6 and that gives me my output value. Okay, so this is going to be my rule that I'm going to use now to work out A, B, and C. So for A, I have got an input value of negative 3, and I need to work out what the output is. So y equals negative 3 minus 6. Now you see over here, I don't really have to put it in brackets because the x isn't being multiplied by anything. It's just x. It's also not negative. So I don't need to put it in brackets like I did when I had the negative a in the previous example over there. Okay, so in this example, I can just put the negative 3 in there straight away. And then I can simplify. Negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. So if my input value 
is negative 3, then my output must be negative 9. Okay, next one. I have been given the output of 0 and I need to work out what the input is. Okay, so for question B, I have got negative, or I've got 0, sorry, equals x minus 6. So what can I subtract 6 from to get 0? What did I have to start with? I had to start with 6 to be able to take away 6 and end up with nothing. Okay, so over here, x has to be 6 because 6 minus 6 is 0. So over here, that had to be 6. And then the last one, c, I've been given an input value of 11. So y equals 11 minus 6, and that gives me 5. Okay, so my output value is going to be 5 in this one. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in the examples that we have now. You're going to be doing a table now on your own, where, again, you've been given input and output values. You need to go and find out what the rule is, and you need to be able to find out what the missing values are in that table. Okay, so I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this table. Okay, so let's see what you got for that table. So first of all, we have to find out what the rule is. So in order to find the rule, we have to know where our complete pairs of input and outputs are that we can use to actually work out the rule. So over here, I've got negative 8 and 16 as an input and output pair. I know both of those, so I can use that. I can't use this because I have the input, but I don't have the output. I can't use this because I have the output, but I don't have the input. Over here, I have both the input and the output, so I can use those. And over here, I can't use that because I don't have the output. But here, I do have the input and the output, so I can use those. Okay, so now I can use those input and output pairs to be able to figure out what my rule is. 
Okay, so first let's go and do that. So in this example, I've already got over here negative 8 is my input with an output of 16. 5 is my input with an output of negative 10. And 11 is my input with an output of negative 22. And now we need to find out what is our common method that we use to get from there to there each time. Okay, so first for the negative 8 to 16, I have a choice. I can either add 24 or I can multiply by negative 2. Okay, remember it's in order to go from a negative to a positive when I'm multiplying, I have to multiply by a negative. So it has to be negative 2, it can't just be 2. Over here, to go from 5 to negative 10, I can either subtract 15 or I can multiply by negative 2. Okay, again, here I'm going from positive to negative, so to multiply and get from positive to negative, I have to multiply by a negative. And then the last one, from 11 to negative 22, I can either subtract 33 or I can multiply by negative 2. Okay, again, I'm going from positive to negative, so I have to multiply by negative. So my common method that is the same every time is multiplying by negative 2. Okay, so my rule is going to look like this. In this case, it is again x and y, so it's going to be my output is y equals something to do with x. So what am I doing every time to my input to get my output, or what am I doing every time to x to get y? I am multiplying it by negative 2. And the way I'm going to write that is negative 2x. Okay, so that is what your rule should have looked like, is negative 2 times x or negative 2x. Okay, now we're going to use that to work out our missing values. Okay, so for the first missing value, I have got an input of negative 4. So y equals negative 2 times negative 4. And now I need to work out what y is. So negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. So if my input is negative 4, my output is going to be positive 8. So that's what you should have got for that one over there. Then the next one, I've been given an output of negative 6. And I need to know what can I multiply by negative 2 to get negative 6. Because negative 6 is equal to negative 2x. So I need to know what x is. So x is equal to, in order to get negative 6, I have to multiply negative 2 by positive 3. Because the negative times the positive will keep that negative over there. So it's going to be positive 3. So over here, this is 3. And then the last one that I have to work out, I've been given an input value of 7. So y equals negative 2 times 7. And that gives me negative 14. So my output value there is going to be negative 14. Okay, so that's what you should have got for this, where your rule is negative 2x. Okay, so that's what you should have got for that example. Right, now we're going to do one more table where, you, again, you're going to be finding the rule and then filling in the missing values. Okay, so in this table, you've got um, some values that you've been given, some that are missing. You need to find the rule and you need to fill in those missing values. And I'm going to give you three minutes again to complete this table.
Okay, so let's see how you got on with this last table. So first of all, let's just see what values we can use to help us to find our rule. Over here, I've got an input and an output value, so I can use that. Here, I only have an input, so I can't use it. Here, I have input and output, so I can use it. There, I only have output, so I can't use it. Here, I have input and output, so I can use it. And here, I only have input, so I can't use it. Okay, so now I know all of the values that I've got and what I can use to find the values in my table, or to find the rule for my table, rather. Okay, so let's have a look at what our rule is going to be for this. So first of all, to go from negative 10 to negative 2, I have two choices. I can either add 8 or I can divide by 5. Okay, to go from negative 1 to 7, I can either add 8 or I can multiply by negative 7. To go from 8 to 16, I can either add 8 or I can multiply by 2. Okay, so my common method that is showing up every single time is adding 8. Okay, so that is what my rule is going to be based on. Now, before I can actually do my rule, I need to check. In my table, I have got P and Q, and I need to use those variables or those letters in my rule. So my output is Q, is going to be Q equals something with p in it so what am i doing to p or my input to get q or my output every single time i added eight so it's going to be p plus eight and that is going to be your rule in this example over here so q equals p plus eight okay now we're going to use that to help us to work out the missing values. So in the first, for the first missing value over here, I have got an input of negative four. So Q equals negative four plus eight, and that gives me positive four. So if my input is negative four, my output will be positive four. The next one, I've been given an output of 11. I need to work out the input. So Q is 11 equals P plus 8. So what do I have to have over here that I can add 8 to and get 11? I have to add 3 and 8 together to get 11. So P must be 3. So over here my input had to be 3. And the last one, if my input is 12, I've got Q equals 12 plus 8 and that gives me 20. So my output has to be 20 over there. Okay, so that's what you should have got for that example. And that is how we work with tables, with functions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.